Hi guys, welcome back to another Business Tube podcast. Now, today's session we're going to be starting Unit 4 or Section 4. So, we're going to be looking at the Operations Department. And I think back to when you did functional areas, the Operations Department is basically the department that actually manufactures the, 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 the products. Okay, So, they take the inputs, the raw materials, and they manufacture it to the finished goods, the finished uh, products, and that's what we call the Operations Department or the Production Department. So, to get us started guys, just a bit of a recap, um, first of all, um, in order to produce a product, we need to have the four factors of production. And the four factors of production, if you think right back to the beginning of year 10, are land, labour, capital and entrepreneur. Okay? Um, capital being the money, the finance required to start the business, the entrepreneur, um, just a bit of revision again, is the person who's taking the risks and investing their hard uh, cash their hard earned cash into the business and using their skills to start the business up. So, labour being the manual labour, the workers, the employees, and obviously we need land, a space to actually manufacture the products and the raw materials. Okay, so we have three methods of production that you need to know for your exam. We have job production, batch production, and flow production. I just remember whenever, we, whenever we're talking about operations, it's taking the raw materials, the inputs that go into the production department, and then coming out the other end are the finished products, um, the goods that are ready to be sold to the customers, and that's what the operations department is. So the first one we're gonna look at is job production. Uh, I'll just quickly go over this slide with you. Uh, so I've got on here the size of the production. So up here, the size of production, job production is quite small. Um, then we have batch in the middle, and flow production is a very large amount, a continuous production of loads and loads of products, okay? So we will look now at job production in more detail. Now the thing with job production is um, you often get the, the types of questions that you may be faced with operations and with the methods of production are identify the features of a particular method of production such as job production, okay? Um, analyze and evaluate whether it's the right type of production methods for a particular type of business okay maybe the business is thinking about changing the production method so with job production the definition on here uh, job production involves producing a one-off product for a specific type of, of, of customer and what i would like to add in there guys is with job production it's customizable okay so you can customize you can specifically tailor and specifically make the product for a specific type of customer's needs and requirements okay so with job production it creates um, individual or unique products and like i said before they're customized or customizable um, such as so the things that we can make with job production are wedding cakes made to measure clothes okay um, individual products for certain types of customers okay um, the thing is with job production, it's very, very labor intensive. And by that, I mean it requires skilled labor, skilled workers to make those uh, individualized products. Labor is very, very flexible. We can make different things, okay? Because um, as people, we can change. Machines are fixed, they're rigid, that you can't change them very, very easily. But people, we can change. So you could design one wedding dress, and then if you've got a skilled um, tailor, she could design a different type of wedding dress and customize that wedding dress for each individual um, bride and, and what is what are their requirements. Maybe one bride wants a white wedding dress, the other one wants to have gold on their wedding dress. So with job production, you can change that and make different types of wedding dresses for different types of customer needs, okay? In order to make these different products, the workers require a high degree of skill and a high degree of training in order to make these individualized products. The drawbacks, it requires highly trained, highly skilled workers, um, and they are expensive, okay? Workers require to be paid a lot of money, okay? And they also require to be given a lot of training to be able to make these individualized products. I've um, got a little saying on here, Henry Ford said you could have any Model T, and you could have it any way you like it, as long as it is black. By that, this brings us on to flow production. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, basically, you can have any Model T you like in any color you like, as long as it's black. What do we mean by that? It means you have it the way that they make it. You cannot customize it. You cannot request the different colors. You cannot request it to, to be how you want it. 
every single one of these cars is exactly the same. They are identical. And this is what happens with flow production. All the products that are made with flow production are all the same. So it's basically the opposite of job production. With flow production, you cannot change them. You cannot customize them, okay? So with flow production, we're producing as many products as possible. Like I said before, this is a large, high, um, large scale production where we're making lots and lots and lots of products that all look identical. They cannot be customized. Uh, it's used for mass market, so we're producing loads of products for lots of people, okay? Highly automated, and by uh, automated, you should know what that means by now, but automate, automated means it uses machines. So, whereas before we were using skilled workers with job production, with flow production, we're using automation, we're using machines. And remember, machines cannot be changed very, very easily. They're, they're fixed, they're rigid. So the products are all the same, but we can't change them. Uh, it's continuous production. Machines can work 24, 7, 3, 6, 5. By that, I mean 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They don't need breaks, they don't need to stop. They can work all day, all night, non-stop. And by that, we call it continuous. Okay. The kind of things that are made by flow production are things like fizzy drinks, like Coca-Cola, okay? um, TVs, cars, okay? uh, they're made by flow production, and they just come out one after the other off the production line again and again and again. Chocolate bars is another one, just keep banging out Twixers or Mars bars, and they just keep going out and out and out. They all look the same, they cannot be changed. Uh, the benefits of uh, flow production, so we have economies of scale. If you're watching this for the first time, don't worry what economies of scale is. If you're watching this for revision, economies of scale, as I've said to you before, um, just means that the bigger a company is, the bigger a company gets, its average cost per unit decreases. It can produce one item for less, okay? So the average cost goes down when the business gets bigger. For example, Coca-Cola, they can produce one can of Coca-Cola far less than I could produce a can of Coca-Cola for, and that is economies of scale. So the bigger, bigger a business gets, its average cost per unit go down, um, which lowers its average cost. Um, it means they can make huge, huge quantities very, very cheaply because all the products look the same. Um, so they can make loads again and again and again. Um, they can also bulk buy because they're making loads of products. For example, Coca-Cola could bulk buy sugar and get discounts, okay? Uh, and they can make lots and lots of products for their customers. Um, the drawbacks is that you need to invest, you need to buy these machines, which is very, very expensive, so your startup costs are very, very high. Uh, machinery can break down, okay? Um, the work is boring for the workers, because the workers, the machines are doing all the work, the workers are just there kind of manning the machines. The work's quite boring for the workers. They don't need much skill, they don't need any creativity to make these products. Um, and lastly, I would say the big one with flow production, you cannot change the machines. All the products are identical, cannot customize them. Every single one comes off the production line and they look the same, okay? So you cannot tailor them to your specific type of customers. And next up we have batch production, which is right in the middle. It's kind of a cross between both or a combination of job and flow production. So with batch production, we make a limited number of one type of product, then we change the machine. So we stop the machine, we change the machine, and then we make another batch of something else. For example, uh, you think about clothing. So you make a batch of small t-shirts, you stop the machine, you change the sizes of the machine, then you make another batch of medium-sized t-shirts. Once you've got enough medium-sized t-shirts, you stop the machine, you change the machine, then you make your large t-shirts, and so on. It's the same with bread. So you can stop the machine, make maybe um, a white loaf of bread, stop the machine, make a brown loaf of bread, stop the machine, make a, a big baguette style bread, okay? So you can make different sizes. So with batch production, you make one identical type of product, you stop the machine, you change the machine, and then you make a different um, type of uh, style of products, okay? So it's more flexible. So it's a combination of job and flow. So with batch production, we can produce several different types of products. It's more flexible, we can change the machine, uh, so we have different types of products. Uh, if it's a bakery, we can have many different styles of cake coming from that machine. We stop the machine, we change the machine, and we make a different type of cake. So it's more flexible for our customers. However, um, the drawback is, um, in order to, 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 to change to a different type of bread or a different type of cake, we have to stop the machine. And if we stop the machine, we aren't producing anything. So we have to stop producing, which means 
um, in order to change the machines over, okay? Um, and again, it's quite complex trying to run different machines in different batches at the same time, okay? Okay, I just got another de definition on here uh, for batch production. So it's using the same equipment to make batches of different products. Um, so batches of the same product, I would say. So you make a batch of yellow gummy bears, and a batch of red gummy bears, and a batch of green, and then a batch of blue. Okay. Um, however, the biggest problem, like I said before, is the changeover. In order to change from yellow to red, you have to stop the machine, change the colors, change the mix, to then go on to the next one, which means you're not producing anything while you're changing the products, uh, while you're changing the machines over. Um, just one last thing guys, with regards to uh, job batch and flow. You may get asked um, which method is most suitable for a particular type of business. And you just gotta link it to the type of product that the business is making. If the business is making a product for a mass market, selling it to lots and lots of people, and the product can be standardized, it can all be the same, then you would, you would say flow production would be the best. It allows them to get the cheapest, get their costs down and produce products for less. If the business is making specialist products designed and tailored for individual customers, then you would go with job production. And if it's, let's say, a bakery and they're making a variety of different cakes, but they're only making cakes, then you could say batch production, which they can stop the machine and change it. So you just have to, uh, in your evaluation, link the method of production to the business in question and what is most suitable to them. Um, you need to know about JIT. So JIT is just in time. Now, JIT is basically when you get your raw materials to your factory just in time for when you need them. So it's involving coordinating the delivery of raw materials and components to arrive at the factory just in time for production. Okay, Skoda does this with their cars. So, for example, they wouldn't want their steering wheel and their, their seats for the car to be at the factory at the beginning. The steering wheel, the glass, all of these things go on at the end. So, what Skoda did is they would call their supplier up and they would say, right, we're coming towards the end of making our car, now we need our seats, our glass, etc., to be delivered. They would come just in time, ready to go straight onto the car. Now, the reason we do that, or, or they would do that, we'll look at uh, just now. Now, the benefit of getting your raw materials to arrive just for when you need them is that when they arrive at the factory, they go straight on the car. So they come just in time for when you need them. And that means you don't have to store them because if you get your raw materials to come early, let's say the week before, then you're gonna to have to store these raw materials. And that's expensive to store uh, raw materials because in order to store raw materials, we've got to pay for a warehouse. We've got to pay electricity and security on the warehouse. But with JIT, we're just in time. We don't need a warehouse. We don't need to pay uh, for a warehouse. We don't need to pay for electricity. And we don't need to pay for security. Because as soon as the raw materials come, we use them. They go straight into production. If you're making a car, they go straight onto the car, um, etc. Um, stock can also get damaged in storage. So we don't have a problem with stock getting damaged in storage. And stock can also go out of trend as well. So if you've got a warehouse with loads of stuff in it, waiting, maybe it's gonna go out of trend. So we don't have this problem with JIT. The big problem with JIT, however, is, is because things come just when you need them, they come to your factory, they go straight onto your product, you, you start using those raw materials. If your supplier is late, so your supplier is late with the delivery, production is going to stop. And your supplier might be late for a variety of reasons. Maybe there's traffic, maybe they're just not very reliable. Okay, maybe they just forgot the order or something. Well, if you have a problem with your supplier and you're using JIT and you're waiting for your raw materials to arrive and they don't arrive, well, you're stuffed. You have no raw materials. And if you have no raw materials, you cannot produce anything. Okay, so this is the problem or, or a big problem with JIT. Uh, lead production, guys, uh, like I've got here on, uh, on these images, um, lead production is basically cutting out waste. So anything uh, wasteful in a business, uh, you get rid of that, you cut out anything um, wasteful with lead production. Lead production is basically a method to increase efficiency. If you think about lean, uh, if somebody's lean, they don't have much fat on them. Okay, So if you think about an athlete, then they are lean, they don't have much fat. And with lean production, we're cutting away the fat. The fat's the wasteful, we don't want the fat, uh, so we get rid of anything um, that is wasteful. So it involves cutting down, on waste, 
buying less of or using less of everything, okay? So using less raw materials, maybe that's wasting less raw materials, using less labor, less workers. If we don't need workers, then we shouldn't be using them because they cost money. Using less energy, less floor space, or less time. So there's lots of things that businesses can waste, not just raw materials, but workers, time, floor space, okay? Uh, JIT is part of lean as well because we don't want to be um, waste, having waste in terms of a warehouse that we don't need, okay? So anything that is wasteful lean production is about getting rid of it, okay? So JIT is a key part of lean production because with JIT it means we don't need a warehouse, we don't need to pay for storage, we don't need to pay for electricity, and we don't have damaged components that are in the warehouse. So the benefits of, 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 of lean it allows us to get our costs down, okay? So we get our costs down because we're wasting less raw materials, we're paying less workers if we don't need them, we're wasting less time, and time is money at the end of the day. Um, quality improvements, because rather than um, having defects and problems with products, we get them right. So we have less waste of uh, raw materials, and it increases efficiency, and all of these things will lead to an increase in profit, okay? So lean production is just getting rid of anything that is wasteful. If you want an example of how lean production um, can be brought into a business, for example, rather than having workers and having labor, we could replace labor and workers with machines. Machines are faster, they make less mistakes, they're more efficient, uh, so that would be part of lean. Using less floor space, so the, the, the example I like to give you in class is if you have two machines that are far apart, bring them together, and that's more efficient because you're wasting less time. Here you're wasting time going from one machine to the next, bring those machines together, and then that makes you more efficient, okay? Um, so anything that cuts down waste is part of lean production. And next up we have Kaizen, and Kaizen um, just means continuous improvement, okay? I'll, I'll bring you to this up here, guys, rather than this on here. Uh, so Kaizen, in fact, it's down here. So Kaizen is continuous improvement. It's Japanese for continuous improvement. That's what it means. The Japanese came up with this. I believe it was Toyota who came up with this with Kaizen. So in order to have continuous improvement, continuous improvement uh, basically means becoming more efficient. So Kaizen and Lean are obviously very much linked. Um, now, in order to have Kaizen and continuous improvement, um, we have to meet with the workers. So in a business, the people who can inform you how to be more efficient are the people that are doing the jobs themselves. A lot of people think that it's managers who are responsible for making businesses more efficient. The managers are in their office, they're high up, they're looking down on the workers, they don't really know what's happening. Um, if you want to be truly efficient, you have to meet with your workers, ask them, what do you think we could do better? What's causing you problems in your job? Where might a problem happen? Anything that we can do to improve? And if you start asking these questions to your workers, they will tell you. Yeah, actually, the floor space, I have to walk a long way from one machine to the next. Can we bring the machines together, okay? Um, so if you speak to your workers, they will offer you solutions. And this is part of Kaizen. So it's a focus on elimination of waste again. Um, it, but in order to do this, we need to discuss efficiency with our workers. Remember, um, these are the people that are involved in doing the jobs, so they can tell you. Yeah, we shouldn't just have communication going down the organization structure. We should have communication going up as well. Feedback from workers, how to make the business better. So with Kaizen, we have increased productivity. We can make things faster. We have less wastage, so more efficiency. Um, more efficiency, and because we're talking with our workers, our workers feel good about it. They feel like we value their opinion. They feel respected. So this is part of Maslow, part of self-esteem. So it allows our workers to feel more motivated as well. It allows us to get our wastage down in our business and become more efficient. Okay guys, that's it for this podcast. As always, I hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time.